Hello everybody, welcome back to the 1.0 exploration series. Today we're going to be looking at the Shifra River, one that I've been kind of talking about doing back and forth for a while now since it's just kind of a side area that's easily accessible. But I did wait until I could do pretty much all of it, including the aqueducts, the upper part of it, Nokron, etc. I don't got much else to say about it, so let's just get started. These little claymen in this part of the cave are pretty passive, even after we attack them. I didn't find any of the other ones doing that, but yeah, I just found this a little bit weird. Unsure of intended or not. The Oracle Bubbles spell is called Magic Bubbles. This scare right here has no drops whatsoever. After killing it, I just I just killed it and nothing happened. And I believe it is supposed to be replaced by this uh, Crimson one. It's just supposed to give you a heal, but I'm pretty sure this one didn't do that either. The Inverted Cog Heater Shield is missing. And so is the Horn Bow. With the guide, I marked all the torch positions ahead of time to see if any of them are placed differently. And at least for the ones in this lower river, there won't be any difference. They all pretty much seem to be the same spot. Here's a stock for the Shifra River Merchant. While playing, I got this glitch right here, which uh, I got in post-release. I remember in my first playthrough. I don't know if something can still happen. I might have been patched out. But I just got a little bit nostalgic from seeing this. <laughs> if you don't quit out, you just die eventually, since you're infinite falling. The Formic Rock are called the Rusty Volcanic Stone in this version. I don't even know what they're for, I just noticed that and thought it was noteworthy. And something wild that I noticed is that there's a whole grace missing. The one near the well here. I don't think that's happened yet. Maybe some of the minor ones in Limgrave or something I might have missed, I don't know. But this is the first time a whole grace has been missing in 1.0. For the answer to the spirit boss, there wasn't much different that I noticed. The only thing I noticed is that the sound design is a little bit lacking and was definitely polished later. For instance, when it jumps in the air, it doesn't have the sound effect like when Torrent is doing the double jump. Now moving up to the higher part of this river where the Dragonkin is. The Great Oracular Bubble Scarab is missing. So that spell is just not here at the moment. It could be somewhere else, who knows. Also, that word, oracular, or oracular, I'm assuming there are some oracle, but I don't know, just weird, <laughs> I never heard of that before. In the spot where you're supposed to find the America Scar Seal, the one that gives you plus three to a bunch of the stats, you instead get the Halic Drake Talisman plus one, which, uh, I guess it's useful, but Scar Seals are ones to note, and you can't get the plus five one until way later in the game, so, I don't know, I feel like this one's a little bit of a downgrade, but, you know, maybe you need the Halic Drake Talisman plus one, here it is. There wasn't any different from the Dragonkin fight itself, but I did notice that the Dragon Halberd that it drops is named the Drake Halberd instead. And that the Ash of War is not the normal buff it has, the Ice Lightning one. It's just Charge Forth with no extra effect on it, so definitely a lot more lame. Ice Lightning in general is already quite lacking in this game, and then yeah, apparently the one of the better weapons from this is just not buffable with Ice Lightning. Also behind the Dragonkin was just a random torch. Just completely out of place. It's not here in the post release, obviously, but it was just in here. I was very dumbfounded to see this here, and I had no idea what it served at the time, but we will get back to that later. I did go back to the four belfries and go to Nokron's warp. The model necklace is still there, so there's nothing to comment on that. I was able to get this crystal one night to fall off to its death, kind of. These days, these are definitely protected from me able to do that, and this one is definitely one of the obvious ones, because it's almost anywhere it goes, it can fall off. But funny thing is that I noticed it didn't die actually as it fell down. I waited for a while and it did not fall. Although apparently it doesn't drop any item. I could have sworn it did, but I guess not, even in current patch. Now to be able to access Nokra, we're going to have to take a detour to Kaelid once more. But it works out because there's a lot of little things I missed with Radon especially. But before that, since we can make our way up the well now, someone told me that the Grey Jar can actually be killed. So I went to look into it and uh, sure enough, you can actually hit the Grey Jar and it gets up. No matter how many times I hit it, it doesn't actually die. But every time you do hit it, it actually moves a little bit in that direction. So eventually I could push it off the ledge. And when I reloaded the area after that, it was like laying down like this. I, I, you know, I know it's not a character proper, but it's definitely a little sad. <laughs> it's just seeing them dead like this. It doesn't have a hitbox anymore either. You can't move it or anything. It's just there. Whenever the Radon Festival is actually playing, which we didn't get to see during the last Caleb part, 
the Song of Honor is not playing, it's just playing the Stormville Castle music, which I believe is just normal, but the Song of Honor not playing now is not normal. In this little field where all the warriors are waiting, you can't see any of the phantom NPCs like Tregoth and Lionel. But funnily enough, one of the ones that should be a phantom, Okina, is actually visible. He's actually here in the flesh. I miss a lot with Rodan, so let's look into him a little bit more. One thing I learned recently is that if you go backwards in his boss fight immediately after spawning, he will actually despawn for a bit, and then as he respawns, he should charge at you normally in the post-release. But at 1.0, he does fire off different direction, but then still goes back to his normal AI or so. So it's definitely interesting. The main thing I was commenting on was the summons, and I actually couldn't even find Alexander or Blight's summon. I did read that Blight should be there, but I, I couldn't find it at all. I even tried to wait for some of those summons to die and see if it's, you know, limited slots, which I think it might be actually. I don't think you can summon more than a certain amount of NPCs, at least in this version of the game. I think in the later ones you can summon all of them. Also notice that the summons have a cooldown after dying. You can just kind of spam them, which is certainly a little bit more balanced. I never really play the summons too much until recently, and I feel like they definitely make the fight a lot, a lot easier than they would in the previous patches. Which, you know, Redon has been kind of infamously nerfed and rebuffed and all of that, so, you know. I don't think they carry you as hard in 1.0, but they do help a lot. I was told that the summons have friendly fire, and I didn't really notice that, and I couldn't really tell you. It feels like something hard to test easily. But you can hit them yourself, I noticed. They can even kill them, so I assume it is true they they have friendly fire. Really weird, but sure. Also, when I was hovering over the Trigoth summon sign at one point, it kind of bugged out and it looked like it was actually like active AI even though it wasn't summoned. It was really weird. He, he was actually like fighting something. <laughs> it was interesting. Now we're making our way to knock on Eternal City now. The fourth height west warp seemed bug at first to me. It actually put me a little bit more to the left than it's supposed to put you normally. I did test this and see if it's related to the Nocron opening, and it is, it seems like. Before this, it just warps you to the normal place it's supposed to. So it feels like this is the game trying to lead you into the crater, if you just happen to warp here. But I also eventually got attacked by wolves, so it does feel like a little bit of an oversight that they just put you in front of enemy lines. Like, I think I was tapped out when I was doing this, and uh, I just started getting hit by enemies, so I was like, whoa, whoa. What happened? <laughs> so you can see the flaw with this. And definitely not necessary later on whenever they just marked it in your map with some of the later patches. The Ghost Flame Torch is just entirely replaced here. I noticed pretty early that the Night Maiden enemies replaced some of the Fallen Hawk, is supposedly what they're called, the skinny white enemies that are around this place. And there's also a lot more Silver Tears around here. There's very few in the post release, but Night Maiden's and Silver Tears seem to replace the Fallen Hawk enemies. There is an ambush right before you're supposed to be able to find the Great Shield Soldier Ashes. So you can tell that this was definitely like properly planned out as a level design thing. And they just eventually changed by a bunch of Fallen Hawks, which made this one differentiate the airs a little bit more. Because you see a lot of uh, Silver Tears and Night Maidens in Einzel. So they just changed a lot of these with Fallen Hawks. But they had proper like ambushes it seems too. So, And speaking of which, the Great Shield Soldier Ashes is not here. For a moment, I almost thought these enemies maybe don't exist at all, but they actually do a little bit later on. There is no larval tier in this room right here, but there is still an ambush, kind of like in Einzel and uh, Noxtella, I think, where silver tears drop from the ceiling in this kind of room, although it seems like it might have just not worked properly for me. There's no larval tiers here either, but I did get ambushed by silver tears dropping down on me either way. Now, this isn't the 1.0 thing, this is actually in the post release, and I had completely forgotten. Now for the Mimic tier, it has a different music, the Grave Warden song, and it's playing a lot earlier than it normally does. It normally plays the music of the boss whenever the boss is ready to fight you, but this one is as soon as you cross the fog gate, so that's interesting. The normal song it plays is called the Immured. Going into the Night Sacred Ground, there wasn't much different here, but I did see that the Nox Flowing Hammer isn't there, which that means that this small little branching path just leads to nothing, really. There's like one enemy. But perhaps that's why they added an item here, just to make you want to explore this little segment, or at least be curious. Cause it's, it's one item that I didn't learn how to find until many playthroughs later. And this giant silver tier doesn't drop a larval tier as well. So it seems like just in general, there's a lot less larval tiers in 1.0. Which in a way I guess makes sense, maybe not wanting you to abuse the respect too much, but still. It's a little bit stingy. Now exploring the ancestral woods proper, there is no clarifying horn plus one. The normal one was 
near the well in the lower part of this area. But the plus one version is not here. And I couldn't find it anywhere else either, so. The singing ancestral followers singing is a lot funnier. It's definitely very jarring here in this whenever the previous song is actually quite nice. But here's how it sounds like if you haven't heard it in a while. Yeah, I don't know. This one got a kick out of me for sure. The Shining Horn headband is a set item here that you can just pick up. It's not a drop from enemies. So, you know, if you like this headband, they'll be right there. When fighting the Red Wolf here, I did notice that it does do the three lingering spell attacks. So my statement on the previous video is completely redacted. It's not even random. I just got very unlucky in that version, it seemed. The model necklace plus one is also not there, which is interesting. It almost makes you feel like maybe these are somewhere else or there may not be a plus one variant. Perhaps the base ones are stronger. Who knows? Now, here's something interesting I want to point out. So far, I lit four torches in this ancestral woods area for the boss. But when going back to the hollow grounds, you can see that five of these are lit. And also notice that one of the torches is just missing entirely. But if I light this fifth one I found up here. So yeah, if you haven't guessed so far, the sixth torch that was supposed to be for the path to the regal ancestral spirit is just in a different spot. It's where the dragonkin is. So you would have to kind of take a detour to find it. Mind you, you can make it down there easily if you know where to go. So it's not even that bad necessarily, but admittedly I'm a little torn. I feel like it's kind of cool in a sense of exploration that you kind of have to go out of your way to find this sixth one. But for replay value, I feel like this will definitely drag on a lot. Like, you know, you're are you already here. You probably already want, just want to get to the fight and you just have to go out of your way to this lower area instead of going to like in a kind of U formation to get them all. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think about this, if you think that would be a cool thing post-release, or you're glad they changed that. Now for the actual Regal Sister Spirit, I did notice that the music that plays when you're not in the room yet, just in the Fog Gate room, the Limgrave music is playing, which is definitely interesting. Perhaps this is kind of higher up in the map terrain and it just loaded the Limgrave music, I don't know. Hi, this is Feature Birdo here. I recently got a PC upgrade, so I actually realized, hey, I can actually check this now. So I went and checked and see where this is in the terrain. And if I go up from this room, I actually realize I eventually ended up in the Shiva River proper. So no, it's not that. Predictably, this room is underneath where you would teleport from. So it's just a bug of some sort, I guess. And of course, this boss is near. I didn't go to the lesser one you fight earlier. So it has the same differences. But one thing I noticed that's exclusive to this fight is that the animals that it spawns, some of them are a lot shinier and they also disappear kind of left and right. Just in general, it seems like there's a lot more of them. Not that it changed anything that I can notice, it's just interesting. Now for the last bit of the Shifa River, we're going to the aqueducts. The Order of Healing incantation is called Quell Death, which I guess is accurate. I believe it cures death blight. The Crucible Knight with a spear doesn't drop a somber stone when you kill him. It just doesn't drop anything. So if that's a somber stone you normally need. That's a bit of a bummer, but yeah, it doesn't drop it. The Valiant Gargoyle is playing a different song, the Grave Warden, which we did discuss before since we have fought a Gargoyle already. But it's kind of funny how many bosses use Grave Warden as this thing. I, I definitely need to make a list of all the wrong songs that are reused. Because Grave Warden, Formidable Vote 2, oh, Dragon, are just used a lot as placeholders. And finally, when I killed this Valiant Gargoyles, they only dropped the Vacuum Slice instead of the weapons these two are wielding. Or one of the ones that they're wielding. Okay, so that's all for the Shifa River segment, but I do have some addendums that I want to make for the previous video, since a lot of helpful comments came about explaining some things. Firstly, I mentioned that there were some dialogue differences for Renala, and it seems I got very lucky because I just happened to be playing the female character in 1.0, and apparently that's the only one that's different. So according to this comment, in 1.0, Renala will have a slightly different dialogue if you are male to female character. So I did go check all the four variations, I even double checked what I was using for a current patch. And yeah, it seems like Renalo Collio Culver for every instance except every other female character in 1.0. Hush, fair maid. Hush, little Culver. And another major thing that I was pointed to is that you actually can do various quests in 1.0 in an interesting way. So one of the ways you can kind of cheese this, which I wasn't aware of that it worked this way, is that for instance, you can go into Yura's invasion, the one with the raptors mist guy, 
And if you simply throw yourself off the bridge or just die three times, those count as having invaded. Kind of like how you're supposed to invade in multiplayer, but you don't actually have to kill the player. You can just white sign or die. So I wasn't aware that offline signs like this worked like this, but it did work and it did allow me to continue Varus' quest line. However, there wasn't anything to know actually if that's different in the quest line. You still have to go get the Blood of the Maiden and also you get the item that's all named the same thing and such. There is a slight difference for what happens after that if you use the medallion, but I don't really want to get into that now. I want to save it until we get to Moen's Palace proper. It's not something that's much different, but it will be more relevant when we get there, I suppose. So I'll simply say this little bit of footage till we get there. All right, that's it for this video. I was open to doing Ansel River alongside this video if there wasn't a lot to note about 1.0 Shifra. But it turned out there was plenty to talk about, especially with all subsections. So I think I'll just do Einzel video for the next one. And then depending on how much there is of content to talk about in that one, I may or may not have to go forward to the Lake of Rot, the Moonlight Altar, etc. But I can at least promise that those will be the next few areas that we focus on. Lake of Rot, I've heard, is very interesting. The Moonlight Altar will be right after that. And then we can probably go back and check the Divine Tower in Liurnia in the inverted carrion hall. So that's pretty much set in stone. Anyway, if you enjoyed this series and like these videos, I am putting out a lot of these out. So you should consider subscribing. Make sure to check out all the other parts if you haven't so far. This is the fifth part of the series and we got many left to go. If you want to make these videos more possible, do consider becoming a member as well to support me a little bit. This is going to be a very long series, so I expect it'll be a lot of work. And that's definitely incentivizes me to do it more so. But either way, I hope you've been enjoying it. Thank you for the support so far for the series. It's been incredible. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you around once again. Bye-bye.